It's the return of the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week marks the beginning of the 2018 fall sports season at Bates. On this episode, we preview women's soccer, men's soccer, field hockey, and women's golf, all of which have home events this week. That's coming up on the Bates Bobcast. The women's soccer team opens on Garcelon Field Tuesday night at 8 o'clock against Maine Maritime. Then the Bobcats host Hamilton for their NASCAC opener Saturday at 11 a.m. The Bobcats are looking to improve on a 7-7-1 seven, seven, year in 2017. To preview the 2018 season, head coach Kelsey Ross joined the Bobcast, along with seniors Sarah Gutch, Cassidy McCarns, and Olivia Amder. As you know, Aaron, NESCAC preseasons are quick, and so we throw a lot at the players, and we've done that in a new way this year where we obviously are focused on the soccer side of things, but uh, we've brought in a, a leadership coach and team architect, Donna Fischer, who's been with us a lot, probably more than we've been on the field, frankly, and so uh, we've really redefined our values and the way we're going to operate as a unit so that the soccer bit can really shine, and, and that's, been, that's been fun. Interesting. So a leadership coach. Well, Sarah, you're your captain, so tell us about the leadership coach and what you've learned from her. Yeah, she's really good. I think she's definitely getting us to think about things within our team unity that we haven't really thought of before, and I think it's been really positive and that I've just noticed that this is one of the most close-knit teams we've had thus far throughout my four years here, and I think that's really, really positive looking into the season. Let's go from defense to offense. I'll start with you again on defense. You worked with Sarah McCarthy the last few years. Now you've got a sophomore keeper in in Cat Knuckles. What's that transition been like for you working with her? Uh, Honestly, seamless. She has been a rock star so far. In practice, in our last scrimmage with Bowden, she was on fire, making all these saves, and it made me super motivated as a defender, Uh, not only to like keep working hard, but knowing that she's got my back. Back, like literally back there and mm-hmm. and everything and that's something that's super positive and I can't wait to see what she's going to do coming forward this season. Great, let's move to midfield now. Uh, Cassidy, obviously, you know, we've seen you through the years playing key mints in that midfield, get, going for lots of headers, if I recall, <laughs> uh, based on the photos on the website or anything. So what do you see your role, though, this year now as a senior? Um, I mean, I think it's really exciting to get to a point where we have a lot of depth in the midfield. Um, we have some like newcomers uh, coming in and raising the level um, to a point which I haven't really seen before um, with our program. So um, we had to give them a definite shout out for um, bringing the intensity um, and the skill. Um, And we have people in every grade who can step in there um, and perform. So that's really exciting and something that I think we haven't had in the past. Great. And then live on attack. Who's going to be, who are you going to be working with up there to try and get some goals there? Uh, we have a whole different um, array of people up there. We have a whole different formation coming at you for this year, um, at least right now. Who knows? Um, so we're all excited about that. Truly, I feel like any player on the field is just as good on the attack as they are in the defense. We definitely are a team who defended as a whole and attacked on a whole in the scrimmage. We had some of our most like forward and close plays near um, the the goal against Bowden was from our actual defense and just doing long balls and them just working their butts off and just making strides all over the field. So I think everyone on this team is just a danger in all different positions. Great. Coach, how much depth, in your opinion, is there on this team this year? This is arguably the deepest most talented roster we've had, and I mean that respectfully because we've had a lot of really good people come through the program. It seems to fit with what is our most competitive schedule, and so this was all very purposeful, and we believe in this group uh, in a way that will take us the distance, and looking forward to tomorrow against MMA, that's that's stop number one. Yeah, uh, you already had the scrimmage, Sarah, but obviously the first game Tuesday night, Garcelon Field. Always fun to open under the lights, I imagine. Oh, oh, it's so much fun. Um, It's a completely different feeling because I think it's the beginning of the school year. Everyone's excited and they're ready to be back. And here we are. We're going to be in the middle of campus and we cannot we cannot wait to get going. We've been itching for it since day one. And Cass, I know it's one day at a time, but obviously you do have NESCAC match this weekend, right, at home on Russell Street. 
Uh, last year, I recall, a pretty dramatic game at Hamilton, so I think it should be a pretty exciting one again this year, right? Yeah, we're definitely really excited. We we don't want to look at MMA yeah. as an easy win at all. Um, it's a stepping stone for sure. Um, but we're just sort of itching to get out there, um, show who we are, play our game, um, and then carry that into Hamilton and score some goals. And then speaking of scoring goals, Liv, you scored quite a few of those so far uh, in your career. I mean, obviously it's all about the team, but what does it mean to you the success you've had on offense so far, you know, through the first three seasons, all NESCAC every year? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be able to have any of the goals or any of that stuff without my teammates behind me. Knowing I have a strong defense, a strong goalie, just makes me able to push up more on the attack because I have the strength behind me, and I know that. I have strength all over the field, for that matter. Um, So it's really all of my teammates just behind every ball, behind every play. Every single person from the bench onto the field has part of that play for all the goals. And then, Kelsey, obviously the, the goal overall is to get to that NASCAC tournament that anything can happen. In terms of that, what steps does this team need to take maybe from last year? You know, I think there are a number of steps, and we've laid that out pretty strategically and also really organically as a group. It's come from them as a unit. And as we said, Aaron, hey, MMA is tomorrow, and, and that's the goal. There are some steps that we'll take tomorrow to be successful, and then we'll reevaluate and plug away for Hamilton. You start on turf, then you go back to grass. Does that make any difference, really? Or? Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All the same. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, from a defensive perspective, obviously the ball moves a little quicker there on the turf, right? What do you have to do uh, adjustment-wise? Yeah, so I think the main thing is just obviously body behind the ball because if a long ball gets played, that ball's going to skip and run. And either you get your body behind the ball or you are busting your tail to go chase it. And I think just acknowledging that it's going to be a little different and acknowledging that it could move faster and it could take maybe a different bounce is just something that we need to work through mentally. Um to be successful against MMA tomorrow. And then, Sarah, I know you you dealt with some injuries early in your career, mm-hmm. right? And finally healthy last season, basically. So what does it mean to you now be trusted as the captain here as, your, as a senior? Yeah, it's it's awesome to, to have your teammates respect you like that. But I think the biggest thing is that as a threesome up top, uh, being a senior class is the, definitely the most important. And there's no way that I could do it as a captain without these girls here sitting beside me they're just they have my back 100 percent, and i know that if there's anything that i would ever need that they would be right there with me well just for people know uh in division three soccer it's not like you just show up and be on the team but you have a senior walk on this year anastasia left who showed up and made the team Liv, tell us about her yeah she's great we're having a great time i'm getting to know her on a really different level than i have before just as being classmates now we're teammates as well we're beginning becoming so close to her. She's fantastic. She works her the hardest. She's always giving 100%. And she's just a great senior to have beside us and to finish the journey with us. And Kelsey, what's her background? So Anastasia has a fun background. She's been obviously at Bates for three years, entering her senior year, played soccer in high school uh, from Kentucky. was at the Millbrook School and decided at the end of her junior year, I'd like to try to give this a go. We were really clear about what that might look like and you know, to give her credit, she did what she needed to do to earn a spot on this team and finish it out. I got to ask you about something I saw. I think it was on, like, your Instagram story or something <laughs> with, like, the blindfold and the jumping around. <laughs> Cassie, you could tell us about that drill. What was that? Yeah, that was something fun we did after practice the other day. After we cooled down, we were like, oh, practice is over. And then we turned around and we were like, oh, no. Uh, we got something <laughs> else in store. Uh, basically, one partner was blindfolded. The other one had to navigate them using only um, – their voice through different obstacles like balls and cones and stuff and it's just I think another aspect of what we're really trying to bring to our team this year it connects with the team architect um that really being our foundation this year um so it's just something fun that we we have a lot of fun together so it's important to emphasize that too well it sounds like almost like a a trust exercise but also everyone was laughing and having a good time right oh yeah for sure there was definitely uh some funny moments caught on tape for sure like (laughs) looking back at our social media and whatever me me and Cass were roommates we were just cracking up at some of the videos (laughs) with girls walking either out of bounds or just like running into each other it was it was fun it was fun for sure Liv, what does the team dynamic compare maybe to previous seasons in terms of uh, the the newcomers, the first years, what are they like? As a team, we were really stressing positivity within everything we do, and that has been a, like definitely 
visible to anyone who would even just watch our practice that every single girl on this team just is promoting positivity. As a team, we have made it our goal to kind of like shush out the negatives, acknowledge what we need to do to get ourselves as a better team and get ourselves as a more united and like connected team. But we are really working on just like positivity and enforcing that within everything on and off the field. Great. And Kelsey, any other final thoughts on what you're most looking forward to a Tuesday night uh, against Maine Maritime? I couldn't tell you one thing, Aaron. I will know that we've talked a lot about being resilient, and so I'm looking forward to watching this group, you know, 1 through 25, hit a bump and be better for it, uh, to being empathetic with their teammates, to supporting each other through different things, uh, to being in the moment, to being really purposeful. I mean, this is what we're all about, is to be uh, – we're here. We're with MMA. Uh, and as Liv said, to be really positive because this group's going to rep it. That much I know. The men's soccer team has a new head coach in 2018. Tyler Shake comes to Bates from Knox College, where his team shut out 12 of their 20 opponents last year on its way to a 13-3-4 record. The team he inherits at Bates boasts plenty of experience. Last year, the Bobcats qualified for the NESCAC tournament for the first time since 2010. They finished with an overall record of 8-6-2. It's time to kick off the new era of Bates men's soccer. And the Bobcats open on Garcelon Field against Maine Farmington Wednesday at 8 p.m. And they host Hamilton for their NESCAC opener Saturday at 2. Time to preview the men's soccer season here on the Bobcast. We got four captains plus new head coach Tyler Shake joining us. Sam Hushman, Peter Bakken, Alex Marceau, and Drew Munoz here. And let's start with the new head coach, Tyler. You got four captains here. What stands out about them? Why are they going you know, to be the leaders for you guys this year, you think? First off, I want to say I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of the, the more the merrier type, and it was difficult choosing between a lot of great personalities on this team. So um, these four stood out uh, as guys that obviously love the program, not wholly indifferent, though, from the, from the others, but they have committed themselves in a fashion that I think um, others on the team see. They're, they're true leaders, um, certainly an alpha male amongst them. So um, it's, they made it pretty easy on me in, that, in the end. All right, Drew, so I understand that practices have been two days, three days, a, a little bit a pretty grueling, but preparing you for the season. You, you're pretty excited right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think every last person on the team, excited. We're ready. We want to get this going. I hope Wednesday can get here quicker. You've been playing since, you know, you were a first year here. What have you kind of learned, you know, growing throughout your career as a member of the Bates soccer program? Well, the first thing I learned is the NESCAC is very different from anything I've played before. It's very physical. Uh, I think Williams, my freshman year, I was basically sent to my grave in a hit. Uh, that was my first introduction to the NESCAC, really. And since then, it's just how do you avoid getting hit uh, and getting back up and going. Well, Alex, tell us about a little bit about your role this year and how your role has grown throughout your four years in the program. Yeah, so I've never – I wasn't a consistent starter as a freshman nor as a sophomore, but uh, I experienced a little more of that last year, and um, my role as far as influencing the other guys has increased um, as as would be anticipated throughout my years here, and uh, that's kind of what I look to bring this year as a, as a veteran. I've switched quite a bit between wing back and wing mid, and that's something I've just gotten more comfortable with over the time. I think that we as a team have – kind of preach this versatility on the field uh, as well as off the field. But um, I'm comfortable and excited for my new role. Great. Um, Peter, obviously the team was you know close with head coach Stuart Flaherty, got the job at Dartmouth. Now you got a new head coach in here. Tyler, what's that transition been like? Uh, the transition's always a little interesting the first few weeks, especially over the summer because no one expected Stu to leave. Um, so the first few weeks were interesting, but when Tyler came in, he just really hit the ground running. The first two weeks, he called everyone on the team and – talked to each of us for a long time. I know I talked to him for about an hour, and then we actually got in here, and just three a days, we were constantly around the team, and soccer soccer. Once you start playing, everything's great. Sam, you've been anchoring that defense here. Tell us about teammates on defense, who you're working with back there. Yeah, so um, the back line's been great so far in preseason this year. We have some, some freshmen coming in who have been playing really well and I think are going to have a big impact on the team this year. We have some returners that also should make a, a pretty big impact. So, yeah, we're just really excited to get going. The preseason's been great. Coach has been phenomenal. Josh has also been phenomenal helping in the transition from Stu to Tyler and 
we're just really excited to get going. Drew, tell us a little bit about starting a NESCAC play almost right away. You have one non-conference game. This is typical, though. You got Hamilton first week. Last year, you guys went there and got a pretty dramatic win. That must have been pretty fun. Yeah, it definitely was, but I guess everyone at the moment is really concentrating on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Saturday's still five days away from now, so at the moment, our focus is on UMF come Wednesday, 8 o'clock, and we're getting our minds right for that game. Uh, Alex, how exciting is it to open uh, under the lights, you know, on Gar Salon? That seems to be something you guys have been doing in the most recent years also. Yeah, it's what you dream about as a player, to play in front of your home fans right outside of Commons. I mean, that's just, if that doesn't ex get you excited, then nothing will, you know. So, like Drew said, that's where our mind is right now, and then we look forward to getting started in the NESCAC soon after. Pedro, I believe you had a game-winning goal last year on Gar Salon, right? If I, I recall, did, yeah. against <laughs> Thomas. It was quite dramatic with 20 seconds left in double overtime. Yeah, it's funny, like, soccer's so interesting because obviously, you know, it is fairly low score, right? And so yeah. every game is pretty much close, whether it's against Thomas or against, like, the you know, Williams or an Amherst, right? So what's that dynamic like as a player to, you know, that, you know, you could possibly beat one of the better teams or you could lose to a team maybe you, you, you are more talented than? The thing I love most about soccer is the difference comes down to inches. It comes down to just, like, a millisecond beating someone to the ball. And so that means that if someone switches off for just like half a second, that can be a difference in the game because the other team can dominate for 89 minutes. But if in that one minute they let something slip, too bad, they're going to lose. And so that's something that I just love about soccer. And it's what we do work on every day in training is just being switched on all of the time. Great. And then, Sam, you touched on maybe some younger guys coming in. Who are some maybe individuals besides your fellow captains here have stood out to you in practice, you think? Um, I think the whole team has been great. Our senior class has been amazing. I mean, the four of us here, Pater's a junior, um, but there's so many leaders on this team that are all going to play really important roles this year. I mean, the freshman class is very talented. We've been very impressed with them, but it's going to be a team effort this year for sure. Actually, you touched on something. Yeah, three of you are seniors. Pater, you're a junior, so what's it like being a captain as a junior? <laughs> My job's a little different. I'm kind of in charge of making sure all the balls are pumped and the cones <laughs> are out there, even though I didn't do a great job of that yesterday. It's equally as important of a role. Don't let him, <laughs> don't let his modesty set him down a little bit there. <laughs> so um, you, you're one of the captains, but you have some of them. You have to make sure all the details, all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Yeah, I'm a little bit more of that like day-to-day nitty-gritty, the small stuff. They're a little more big picture. Being you know you know the first year head coach here at Bates, um, what Type, are you looking to maintain the type of style they used to play, or are you changing things up a little bit, you think? Aaron, this is twice that you've tried to get me to reveal our deep, dark secrets, um, once on the radio show and here on this podcast. We're looking to, to turn the tempo a bit more. We're looking to get after teams a little bit more. Um, nothing's going to be revolutionary. All of us in the NESCAC are trying to do the same things, pressurize opponents and get in behind. Um, we hope to do it more than our opponents. What have you been emphasizing in practice these last few days? Defense. I think Bates soccer starts with defense first. So, and so tell us a little bit about you know each of your captains. I mean, Sam, he kind of anchors that defense, right? What have you noticed about from Sam's, him? Sam's terrific, and he's for me is one of the, the best defenders in conference. Watching all their film last year, um, his mobility is terrific. He's got good vision, and we're asking him to do a lot more in that capacity this year. Uh, Peds for me is is one of the top players in the region. Uh, it's nice when you can give a captain's armband to one of your best guys on the field as well. Um, so he's been sort of a model citizen in that regard. Uh, Alex, for me, is, is when you talk alpha males. Um, he's someone, when, when he speaks, I listen. Um, so he's terrific in that role. And then Drew Munoz is one of the, the first one I met other, other guys. He helped interview me, and um, immediately his matura maturation process from freshman to so senior year, he embodied that. Um, so we need guys that are program guys, will do anything for the program. And I think a lot of a lot of uh, underclassmen will learn from Drew Munoz in that role. Terrific. Well, Drew, you were on that committee then. So what was that search like for the new head coach? It was interesting. I mean, everyone was qualified for the position. Uh, I met with Tyler, and I actually came away with that pretty happy. Tyler and I, I felt we clicked right away, and things looked really well from there. But still had some other coaches to look into. At the end of the day, Tyler was the right choice, and I'm glad we went there. Great. Um, Alex, I mean, this being your senior year, what do you think the program needs to, you know, do this year to continue to kind of grow? Because obviously last year, a big step, you know, making that NESCAC tournament with that dramatic win against Colby. Yeah, I think anyone can see that it's been a constant upwards trajectory since we've been here as, as freshmen. So I think uh, the buy-in has been tremendous uh, and increasing every year. And we have had a lot of moving parts this off season. So our guys' ability to adapt to that and uh, to take it to our advantage is going to be huge, and I think that's uh, how we'll move forward.
Pedro, you had, I think, four goals, four assists last year in the midfield mostly, or what do you see your role kind of? Uh, wherever coach puts me. <laughs> um, I played last summer, I played left back for a team, which oh. was completely new, a position I'd never played before. I'm willing to do whatever it takes for our team to win. Who are some maybe some other midfielders who have stood out uh, in camp so far? All of them. We have a very deep roster, and I think that's one of the great things about Bates soccer is I think there's eight, nine guys that can all step into the midfield and make an impact. Great, great. Well, any other thoughts on the upcoming season, Sam? Just excited to get going. Looking forward to UMF. The field hockey team posted its second straight winning season last year, finishing with a record of 9-7 and seven, and qualifying for the NESCAC tournament for the third straight time. 2017 included three wins over teams ranked in the top 10 nationally, all in the same week. Now, Bates looks to take the next step. Head coach Danny Ryder Kogut and captains Shelby McCormick and Grace Fitzgerald preview the season with the Bobcats' first game set for this Saturday at noon on Campus Avenue Field against Hamilton. Danny, we'll start with you. Obviously, you know, last year, a, a strong season for the team, some big wins over ranked opponents. What's the next step, in your opinion, for this program this year? I think this year what we're looking for is a consistent season like that week we had last year. So instead of it just kind of coming at the end of the season um, or within those last three weeks, we're looking for it to be sustained through the entire season. Yeah, in terms of getting off to a strong start this year, Grace, what do you think some of the keys will be? I think our team dynamic is important and just having fluidity on the field and playing our own game. And then Shelby, what are your thoughts in terms of being a senior captain? What are some things in your mind about how to lead this team? Um, coming as a captain from last year into this year, I think it's important for both Grace and I to know that each year we have a different team. So knowing how to handle players and work with one another and improve communication from year to year is going to be really important because it's different. So making that transition right from the start is going to be really key to our success throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, Danny, it is a different team because last year you had um, you had no graduate seniors the previous year. This year you do lose a couple seniors who graduated. So, you know, like O'Reilly in the midfield, how do you replace her if you can? Yeah, well, I you know, I don't think we'll ever replace O'Reilly. I think she was such a unique and incredible player. I think it's just our job to bring in the absolute best um, players each year to – to fill in as the new first years, but we don't really rely on them to necessarily fill in the spots um, left before. I think we spend more energy making sure that our returners are able to step into those shoes. And I think they are because they've been, you know, no one sees that behind the scenes glimpse of the team where somebody is training continuously as that right mid, but not necessarily getting game time. And they're literally on the heels of an O'Reilly ready for next year. So um, I don't think we ever can replace a player like her, but I think we're just looking to get the next right mid who has their own special twist on that position um, and finding somebody who fits that. And then Grace, uh, you know, you're you an upperclassman now and a captain. What do you tell some of the younger players, first year sophomores, about what it takes to succeed? Because you obviously had a, you know, a breakout season last year. I think it's just important to be confident in yourself and your skills to know that your teammates – like, I always want you to be successful and are there to help you. And last year you opened the season with a long road trip, had to play a couple of very tough teams there at Hamilton. This year you get to open at home. That must be pretty nice, right, Shelby? It's going to be a very nice feeling to be on our home turf, have them have the, the long bus ride this year, and we'll have a, the opportunity to practice the next day and really focus on on Hamilton, have one game at a time. So. I want to ask about your, your teammate, Taylor Loff. I mean, obviously, she's had such a, a great career there on offense. What's the dynamic like with her being, you know, knowing she can truly really set the tone like that? Taylor is definitely another leader on the team, and she brings her own spin to the game. And each year she comes back with something new, um, which is really great to see, and a lot of the players do that. But to know to have her up in the forward line, really leading other forwards and showing them how to communicate, what skills to use, and just uh, pulling the pulling the inner field hockey player out of everyone is is very um, confident building up there. Great, Danny, um, Grace, and Shelby being the captains, what makes them such great good leaders? I think they're really level. Um, you know, neither one is going to give us like a gut reaction without thinking about it first, and that goes for their teammates too, like how they approach their teammates. Um, so I think just having two really level headed leaders who are willing to see everyone's side and not just a single side is crucial. I think, Grace, I want to ask you, I mean, you're focusing on this year, but that game-winning goal you had against Babson last year, was that kind of a, 
aha moment for you in terms of uh, this team and everything, or did you, did you feel like you were settled in before that almost? Um, I don't know. I always felt very comfortable on the team and everything, and that was great to have like a game-winning goal, but it was a whole team effort to get there, and I'm just ready for this year now. And um, for you, for you, Shelby, we mentioned the consistency earlier, right? Strong finish to last season. Um, I mean, you, you basically rolled down the stretch, Middlebury being, you know, a, obviously a tough opponent. It feels like you're pretty much even with most teams in the conference, isn't it? I would definitely say that we're, we're ready to go this year, and we're really focused, and we're all on the same page, which is we all are going to take one game at a time and work together and focus on that one game. And with the new structure that we started in the middle of season, that's what we're starting with this year. So to be able to kind of start on that same level and be able to learn right from the beginning and carry through with that throughout the entire season will definitely be a game changer for us, I think. Danny, obviously from a coaching perspective, you're hoping that the new structure stays that way the whole year instead of having to make in-season moves. Yeah, I mean, I think last year when we made the adjustment, it was the first structure that we felt really exposed our strengths, which are um, speed and our passing game and just our ability to transition really quickly from defense to attack. So I think before our structure was, it was, there wasn't anything really too wrong with it, but it just wasn't exposing, I think, what makes our team um, special and gives us that edge. So senior year for you, what are some thoughts, what are some goals you have in your mind? I just want this to be the best season we've had yet, and I'm going to leave it all out on the field with the rest of my teammates. And I know what I want in the end for the season, but like I said, one game at a time, and if we can accomplish that and stay focused, I think we'll be successful throughout the rest of it. But leave it all out on the field. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Danny, Grace, and Shelby, thanks so much. The women's and men's golf teams get their seasons underway this weekend as well. But only the women are at home. Both teams play at Bowdoin Saturday. Then the women host the Bates Invitational this Sunday at Martindale Country Club. Had to preview the women's golf season here on the Bobcast with Andrea Hepfinger, one of the captains for the women's team. And first of all, Andrea, you're getting off right away uh, hosting an event, uh, the Bates Invitational this Sunday at Martindale. Tell us a little bit about Martindale Country Club. This is your second year in the program. You obviously practiced there. How excited are you to host a tournament right away at, at that venue? I'm really excited. It's going to be a great tournament. Um, Martindale's a really fun course. It's a really mature course. Fun fairways, stuff like that. It's all super hilly, so makes it very challenging for people that don't know the terrain. But um, I really enjoy playing there, and I'm very lo much looking forward to this event. Women's golf team, you got um, it's kind of a small team, so you, I'm sure you get to know each other pretty well because you know 18 holes for a round, and everything. So what's that dynamic like, kind of in terms of there being three captains and sort of a small squad? Yeah, um, that's very interesting, but it's been really fun. All the girls on the team, we all just sort of gel together. Everyone kind of does their own thing for the most part. So I think without golf, I don't know if any of us would have met. So it's nice to have kind of friends from different walks of life that I might not have otherwise met. So it's really fun. We get along really well with the guys team as well. We all practice together. So it's always a really fun group. We usually hang out on the weekends every so often and yeah, it's really enjoyable. Well, tell us about your fellow captains, Brittany and Chelsea. Well, Brittany, um, so she is in my class. She's super fun. We um, hit it off right away. We always we always room together for tournaments and stuff like that. So she's really sweet. I'm very excited to be hanging out with her this season. Um, and Chelsea is our senior. So Chelsea is, like, the nicest person I've ever met. Um, really fun person to golf with. Just an overall good human being so she's great she'll be an awesome leader awesome role model for our incoming freshmen so I'm really looking forward to seeing how everyone kind of like meshes this season terrific you're from Madison Wisconsin so what attracted you to come out to Lewis and Maine to Bates for college this was probably the best school I could get into while also playing golf so I was like okay this is I see what I need to do time to start emailing the coach all the time, so I was super annoying to the athletic department, and eventually uh, I got an email from Coach Upham, and I was able to meet with him and the AD, and just sort of get a feel for like where I'm at academically and where I'm at with golf, and it just worked out really quite perfectly. So yeah, I always knew I wanted to go somewhere out east, 
So that was a really good fit. I wanted a really academically challenging school. So that was also perfect. So Bates pretty much just checked off all the boxes. It was kind of a toss up between Bates and Bowdoin mm. and Bates won. You mentioned Coach Upham. He wears kind of multiple hats here, yes. right? He leads the golf program and helps out with Nordic skiing. So what, what's he like as a, as a coach? He's great. So Coach Upham is not like a huge golfer. Right. Sorry, Coach Upham. I don't know if you like want me to tell anyone this, but too late. Um, <laughs> so he really is a good morale booster. He drives the golf cart around the course. He brings us snacks. You know, even if I take a double on a hole, he'll be like, you're doing great. And I'm like, coach, that's just because you don't know anything about golf. <laughs> to be clear, you have great instruction from Nick Glico. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. The pros at Martindale are wonderful. Nick is so great. I am so looking forward to meeting with him, especially because I have to work out some stuff with my swing. I've got a weird draw right now, so I don't know. I have to deal with that. But, yeah, it's really awesome. I love our coaching staff. Like, it's just kind of the perfect balance. Like, Coach Upham is awesome for tournaments. Like, I love having him there. He's just a great person to have. And does he keep that a sense of humor about, like, not really necessarily having a golf background? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, we just call him, you know, he's, he's the snacks guy. Like, he's here for the snacks. He brings them to us. Like, that's it. <laughs> snacks and morale. There you go. So um, in terms of working with, you know, Nick over at Martindale, what is that dynamic like? You mentioned, you touched on it, you know, working on your swing and everything. Um, is it, uh, I mean, does he, he doesn't follow you around the course or anything? Are you working on the driving range? How's that go, I guess? Um, usually it's mostly work on the driving range. Mm -hmm. So Nick definitely has a lot of balls in the air as far as coaching goes, just because he helps out both the men and the women's team. Yeah. So it's mostly driving range stuff. Uh, either I'll video my swing and send it to him like, hey, Nick, can you take a look at this? Like, is there anything I can tweak here? Or I'll just, you know, if he's out on the range with the guys, I'll just say, you know, hey, Nick, can you come over here? Like, I just like I'm working on this. Can you tell me like if I need to do anything? Um, and yeah, so he's really great. I know the guys love him. He's a wonderful coach. He's had like he has a lot of experience, which is really nice. So I really like having him there. He's like a good person to keep us all on track. What are some goals you've set and maybe the team has set uh, for this year? Well, I think a lot of it is getting more intense with the practicing. That's a huge thing just because we haven't had the facilities before this year. So it's really exciting because we'll have a lot of opportunities to do practicing in the winter and yeah, and after the golf season, of course. So a lot of that and then I think just continuing to play as well as we can, and that's going to help, like, with the practicing. And just have fun. Tell us about these new facilities. Well, as far as I know, they're currently set up um, in the ice rink. And so we've got netting, we've got shot simulators, mm -hmm. and... Um, mats and stuff like that so we can hit into that the simulators tell us you know like how fast we're hitting the ball like how fast our swing is you know like the degree at which your club hits the ball stuff like that basically good information for when you're practicing golf um then other than that i mean a lot of us putt in our bedrooms because we've got carpet and the floors are uneven so it's pretty perfect um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing so far. It's been totally fine. And yeah, I think everyone's been practicing a lot all summer, you know, and some a little bit over the winter and on breaks, but yeah, I think it's going to be a good season. I think everyone's like really ready to go. So I think the golf team, probably the only team that practices in their dorm a little bit. <laughs> yep. I mean, probably like, I don't know how many of the other teams can really do that. I mean, maybe hockey, but yeah, no, that's definitely a golf exclusive thing. You know, chipping in Pigel, potting in your dorm room. That's pretty much the usual, honestly. All right, Andrea Hepfinger, thanks so much, and good luck at the Bates Invitational this Sunday at Martindale. Thank you. The volleyball team opens its season Friday at the Wheaton College Invitational, and the cross country teams compete in the Bates Colby class wave races on Saturday. We will preview their seasons, and we will take an in depth look at the Bates football program. Next time on the Bates Bobcast. Bye.